Welcome back. I am joined today by KP Reddy. He's the CEO and founder of Shadow Partners and also Shadow Ventures. My name is Jeff Eccles. I am a senior advisor and head of marketing at Shadow Partners. And every week I get the opportunity to sit with KP Reddy and ask him about his LinkedIn posts. If you're not following KP Reddy, so K period, P period, R E D D Y on LinkedIn. And my question for you is why not? If you're in the AEC or CRE space and you want to know what's coming in the future, if you want to know about innovation for the built environment, you need to be following KP. But I get the benefit every week of sitting with KP and saying, KP, what were you thinking? when you posted that on LinkedIn. This is what we call unpacking KP. So KP, happy new year. Welcome back. Let's talk about a new post. <laughs> happy new year. All right. So you posted, actually, as we're recording this, you just posted this yesterday. And I think it's a really intriguing point, uh, especially as we're getting ready to launch the next cohort of our incubator. I think this is really relevant uh, in, in that context. But you wrote, it's looking like if you are a SaaS company with no AI strategy, you may as well be pitching your novel client server technology to VCs. Okay, so first of all, what does that mean and why does it matter? Yeah, it's it's kind of funny. I, I post these things and, you know, entrepreneurs tend to be on the youngish side a little bit. So sure. they're like, what's client server? You know, like I might as well yep. throw something about... Uh, magnetic tapes and punch cards but um I, I think... we're showing you're we're you're dating us right now so <laughs> yeah. just the old warning. guy the old guys right we're like the the yeah. muppets the guys in the <laughs> cool. um so i think i think the reality right is if you're in tech you have to not only understand the shifts but also constantly question your relevancy as a startup and if you're a SaaS company, yeah, we're cloud, we have a mobile app, et cetera, et cetera. That be kind of came the table stakes, right? That That's like, mm -hmm. here's what, uh, and now, now tell me what problem you're solving. And I think what's shifted in the venture community, especially, you know, specifically to venture, is they're not going to fund this is like an absolute, right? Like you can prove me wrong. You can hit me up and argue with me. I'll, I love arguing, but I will put this in very absolute terms. If you're not talking about your AI strategy to a venture capitalist, you're not going to get anywhere. Now, the flip side of that, VCs will say, well, every deck has, every deck we look at, every pitch we have says AI. And I'm like, yeah, of course, because Five years ago, every deck you had, every pitch said something about cloud and SaaS. Like, the, of, right. like of course, right? This isn't a fad. This is like the next evolution of software platforms. This is not a feature. This is like a new platform move, right? right. So we moved from mainframes to client server to the cloud to mobile and now we're at AI, right? right? So I don't I don't think, I think you have to shift your thinking. So if I was a startup right now, if I don't have an AI strategy, I would not actually pitch a VC. You're wasting mm -hmm. your time. You're not going to get through the gatekeeper, yeah. right? So I think you can't ignore it. So I think there is a, a retrenching of existing, VC, uh, existing startups that need to retrench and rethink and repitch. The second thing is like when you think about AI strategy, people are very focused on the customer experience and the customer feature set and how your platform is leveraging AI to deliver a different type of customer experience. Um, that's like the obvious one. The, the back end of it, right? So think of it back of house. You can't ignore that AI is making software developers five, 10, a hundred X better and faster. So I think you also have to have answer the question of how is AI making you more productive and therefore more capital efficient. So if you said, 
call it your startup two years ago was a SaaS startup. He said, oh, I need to hire 10 software engineers and I need X million dollars. You have to be able to address that actually the way our CTO has deployed AI on the back of the house is making us so much more capital efficient that I only need two engineers. Or I'm going to reach these milestones in twice the time with the same 10 engineers. So I, so I think you, you can't, you, there's this thing where people want to overlook the back of house productivity. You and I were talking about this the other day, just around video editing and mm -hmm. audio editing. For $16 a month, we can run AI to do what some vendor, we talked, some consulting vendor wanted to charge us $5,000 a month to do. Yeah. with people like that's incredulous <laughs> you know? right, so if you right. think about it you really have to uh, address those two points when it comes to ai especially to the venture community and i think if you don't you're a luddite yeah i'm, I'm glad you brought up the back of house piece of that because one of the things this is to me, this is a real danger zone in this whole discussion, right? If you don't have an AI strategy, you may as well be be pitching a novel client server technology. But then what we see sometimes, and I'm thinking the context of of our incubator that we run, and and granted, those those are early stage or pre seed stage ideas, um, and and even my students, uh, which are even maybe arguably earlier stage. Um, in, in their journey. But what I see often in those two contexts is, oh, we've got AI, mm -hmm. or we've got this AI component, but it's <laughs> one, maybe it's not even a strategy, but it's, it's almost like, oh, we're going to, we're going to put this, this AI window dressing on, which may be client experience or customer experience. Um, but it's certainly w when they're, when they're at that point, and they have that, um, I would say, pretty shallow point of view. They're certainly not getting to that back of house that you're talking about, the efficiency, the capital efficiency, et cetera. Yeah. And I, and I think that's where, so, you know, when you're a founder and you think about raising money and you think about valuations, right, there's only two dials to valuation. One is revenue and then the multiplier. 2x revenue, 20x revenue, 100x revenue. When you're pre-revenue, this is zero. Right. So you can have 100x times zero and it's still zero, right? Yeah, let's let's go back to algebra. So it's important that when you're communicating your strategy that you are, you do believe you can be capital efficient. And what I'll tell you is the deeper that strategy is vetted out, and it starts to shift to here's the tactics and here's the process. The shift of who gets the value, does the VC get the value or do you get the value is what goes on in play. So if it's all strategy and five bullet points in a, in a, in a deck and I ask you tough questions and it's clear that you just put five bullet points down, you haven't put any further thinking, then I'll take all the value. I, I'm taking all the risk. I will take all the value. Great. So you can build your app instead of a year ago, it would have taken you 5 million to build a product. But you're saying because of AI development tools, you can do it for a million. Well, I'll take that incremental change, right? I'll, I'll take the Delta and that's my risk and I'll do that. But I get the benefit. If you can actually demonstrate, here's how we approach it. Here's our processes, blah, blah, blah. Here's how we're going to be able to scale software development then you get to take the value, hmm. not the VC. And so who gets the value tends to align with who's taking the risk. And the more the founder de-risks it is the more the value they get to keep versus what I get to keep, right? Yeah. Because I'm also taking the downside of the risk quotient. So I think it's super important. And it's also so exciting at what you can do now. Right. It's, I always tell people, if you had something like Shopify mm. during the Internet boom, you'd have been schlepping all kinds of stuff on the Internet. Right. Right. Every small business. In fact, 
a, the, the local bookstore may have been able to compete with Amazon if they could have done it for $99 a, a month with a Shopify account, right? Right, right. It couldn't because it took hundreds of millions of dollars to build out these platforms. And uh, I remember back in the day, I was coding a shopping cart function from scratch. And I had to figure out how to keep state, like holding things in your shopping cart. I had to do that across Internet Explorer and Netscape and like browser stuff, right? And ActiveX, it was just like insane, right? Just thousands of man hours and Spotify, just, I mean, not Spotify, um, Shopify, it's like $99 a month. Yeah. You literally almost have all the functionality well, of an yeah. Amazon, yeah. right? So where I think it's getting interesting is the founders, you know, when I look at AI and people say, who do you think is at risk? And people want to talk about workers and all that. Mm. Part of me says right. venture capital is at risk. Because now you don't need me. If you're using AI tools to build your product, to launch your product, to market your product, for $16 a month, you're launching your podcast, video, marketing, all that stuff using AI, you don't need to raise money. You don't need it. Why do I need it? I can start my startup for $0 practically, right? And so I, I think it's super interesting I mean, I think we're going to look back on the, the this cycle and this time and everybody's going to feel like, man, I should have. I should have done this. I should have done that. And um, I think it's time for people to really take it seriously. Yeah, that's that's a really interesting point. I'm, I'm you know, sort of unpacking that myself in my head as you're as you're talking about it. And it it's fodder for another episode, certainly, but the future of VC in the face of AI, um, that, that, that I think becomes a really interesting discussion. I mean, obviously we're here talking about the, the future of, of your startup, the future of how you're, you know, how, how and what you're pitching to mm -hmm. the VC. But I, I think we also need to do an episode coming from the other point of view, because it's, you're right. I mean, everything is being affected by this. And and this is this is really both sides of the table at this point. No, and I think just a, a short history lesson, right? When you look at client server and you were a founder, which I was one of those founders, um, you could build software, you and a, another person, you'd build software and you'd sell it to a customer for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or a million dollars. Mm -hmm. They paid you up front. And they paid you a 20% a year maintenance fee for that software. You didn't, know, if you knew how to code, you didn't need a VC. When everything went to SaaS and you had to invest in building the platform and the market paid you in an annuity. So in other words, I'm not paying you a million dollars up front. I'm going to pay you $299, $299 per month. Um, you almost it almost pushed VC to have to support that model because we have to go build it and then sell it incrementally. The good news is they're very sticky because they're paying us every month and it's the frictionless right. and all that stuff, right? Markets are bigger, but you had to have venture capital to build something um, right. that could scale. And then, of course, AWS kind of helped with, oh, well, you don't actually like AWS can charge you per month. Right, if you build on their platform, kind of from a plum. So it's it's really interesting to see how this stuff evolves. And I, I do think great founders are going to figure out how to use these AI development tools and not not need venture capital. Yeah, yeah. I mean they'll, I just... they'll want my they'll want my check because I'm adorable, <laughs> but um, <laughs> they're not going to need my check. <laughs> well, well. There's there's a there's quite a value proposition there, the adorable KP. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're we're gonna we're gonna have to do another episode and and dig deeper into that. But I think for now, you know, this conversation about whether or not you can actually survive, um, you know, get funded, et cetera, without a solid AI strategy, I think is is a really good one because it's. The more we see, and we're gonna, um, I'm just looking at the calendar. Yeah, by the end of the week, we're going to be reviewing all of our applications 
for the next cohort of the incubator. And I fully expect that every single one of those applications is going to uh, include some sort of AI strategy. So I do um, think it, I think it's interesting, Jeff, to point out, um, you know, Matt Ullman, our CTO, who we've worked together mm -hmm. for 15 years or something like that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, he and I have always been early adopters because we need better hobbies, right? So we're always tinkering. And so we've been using a lot of these tools as, and he, and he creates tools, right? So it's not just using things off the shelf. I was talking to a large company CEO and they, they looked at all our activity, like our podcast, like all the stuff that we do. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, How big is your team? I was like three. And they were just blown away. It was unimaginable to them that if you count, like if you count the investing comp part of our business, mm -hmm. there's five of us. That's it, folks. Five people are running a venture fund, doing all this content. Like now, I mean, are we are we working five hours a day? No, we're 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 working. But um, I think there's some. I, I think it's interesting to as, and then we're always kind of constantly challenging ourselves to mm -hmm. to even do better there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like you said, we were just reviewing software uh, in the last couple of days and, and we'll continue to do that. And it's um, we're always searching for the new tools and strategies. Um, and and we're not out looking for, for funding. I mean, we're on the other side of that table. Yeah. This has been really interesting. Um, if, again, if you're not following KP Ready, on LinkedIn, if you're anywhere in the startup space, the especially in the AEC, architecture, engineering, construction, or commercial real estate world, um, focused on innovation for the built environment, you need to follow KP because these are the kinds of conversations that are going on on his LinkedIn profile. So K period, P period, ready, which is R-E-D-D-Y -D on LinkedIn, follow him. And uh, keep following us here. Subscribe here wherever you're listening to this podcast or watching the video of this and um, I'll keep showing up because I love asking KP the question what were you thinking when you posted that on LinkedIn uh, so again this post reads it's looking like if you are a SaaS company with no AI strategy you may as well be pitching your novel client server technology to VCs um, if you're a little younger than KP or I you may need to Google some things there but uh, it'll be worth your while. Um, and I'm glad you listened along to uh, listen to KP unpack this post. So KP, thanks again for doing this with me. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Absolutely. And uh, thank you for listening. We'll be back again next week with another Unpacking KP. Thanks, everybody.